Hello there, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me. Today, let's talk about the things that I absolutely hate about my luxury handbags, the things that drive me nuts, the things that whenever I'm using these bags, I just find infuriating, annoy me, and just ooh, get under my skin a little bit. And before we get into this, yes, I absolutely know that these are first world problems. I know that these are very expensive, luxurious handbags, and nobody is forcing me to buy these. In fact, my husband probably wishes that I wouldn't. But let's be real, we can love things, there can be things in our lives that we love that we spend a lot of money on, but still there are things about them that frustrate us or annoying. And I did one of these videos previously and I thought I would update it because what I really find interesting about these videos and fun about these videos, if you're interested in any of these bags, I think it's really good to have an insight how they actually work out for somebody that owns them and uses them in everyday life. And if there's things about them that just wouldn't be initially apparent that they're really annoying, it's better that you go into that purchase knowing those things and then you can make the decision with your eyes wide open. And let's start with this little beauty. Now, I am not going to sit here and tell you that this little Fendi baguette is not beautiful. She absolutely is. For a colour lover like myself, the colours on this baguette are just fabulous. I love it. I love the bright colours against the neutral background. I think they really stand out. Because of the colours that are in this baguette, they go with so many things. You can put this with so many different outfits because there's probably a colour that's on your outfit in there and it can match in. Or equally, it works really, really well with a neutral outfit and then this becomes the pop. But the thing that annoys me about this bag, like these are expensive bags and I'm just going to show you the strap that comes with it. That's not very pretty. That's not very attractive. I get that it's neutral because it's going with the bag and it's not taking away from the bag or it's not a bright colour that's clashing with the bag. But come on, they, they could have done something a little bit better than this. I just think that's not very nice. And I get that also what they're doing is Fendi have a fabulous range of straps. I'm very interested in them. And I know that they're not going to put one with a bag when you buy it because then you're not going to go and buy one of the straps. But I really think they could have come up with something a li little bit better than this. I just think that this strap's not very nice. I think it's like... I just don't think it's very pretty and it it kind of annoys me with this bag. I have never worn this strap with this bag. I have carried this bag handheld or if I've worn this bag crossbody, the Teddy Blake bag over there in the middle, the orange, I have used the orange crossbody strap that came with that with this. I just, I just think for this amount of money they could have done something a little bit nicer than that strap. I also think if we're going to keep going, when I start these I always get on a roll. I don't think the interior is very nice. I know, I know, once I get started. I know the interior is the colour of the background of the bag, but I just don't think that's very nice. I, th <laughs> I think it's quite bland. I think it's not the most pretty colour. I just, imagine if you opened it, maybe this is my love of colour, but imagine opening that up and having a bit of colour in it. Now, some people might say that would clash, but I, I just think that's not very nice. I don't think it's the nicest colour inside. Now, luckily it's inside, so it doesn't bother me when I'm using it because I don't see it. And I get that the neutral works well with all of the colours, but I just don't think it's the nicest interior. And on this strap, as well as not thinking it's very nice, it's a very awkward length. It's not really a length for anything, in my opinion. When I wear this as a shoulder bag, Okay, if you wanted to wear this on your shoulder, it probably works for that length. Certainly doesn't work crossbody for me. I'm five foot one and a UK size 12. Maybe if you were a lot slimmer than me, it would work. Certainly doesn't work crossbody. It's far too high. It's just an awkward length. It's obviously not adjustable, so you're stuck with the length that it is. And I just think they could have done better. And it annoys me when I lift this bag. I never think when I lift this bag, to wear this strap with it. Okay, now that she's back on her spot over there on the shelf, let's just work around the room. I'm literally just gonna work around and look at all the bags and any of them that are annoying me, I'm going to share. This one, and I love this bag. I think it's very, very usable. I think this is very functional for Chanel. It's a bag that I use a lot. The only thing that annoys me slightly about this bag, if I'm honest, is, I suppose with a lot of Chanel bags, 
the strap lengths can be a little bit problematic. I can wear this crossbody and I do wear this crossbody, but for me, ideally, I would like this strap to be a little bit longer. Now, this is not a deal breaker for me. I do love this bag and as I say, I do wear it crossbody. But if we're talking about things that annoy me about these bags, just an extra inch on the strap length would have been perfect. Next, what could I possibly not love about this bag? I gush about this bag. I adore this bag. I'm in a love affair with this bag. I now have three of this bag. So this one is quite minor. But if we are going to spend these ridiculous amounts of monies on handbags, and if you're watching my, one of my videos and thinking you're gonna buy one of these bags, I would rather tell you exactly what it is about it that annoys me so as you at least have that in. So if we open this up, I'll show you what it is that I'm talking about. And I know I go on about how much I love this bag, but there is something. So if you look on the inside of the bag, the way this bag is made, and if we look down at the bottom here, can you see the little gap in the edge of the side? And then can you see the bottom of the bag here? And there is a very little tiny gap underneath the bag and the outside of the trunk. And I'm sure it's just how they had to make it. But I, but I have the back of an earring stuck down underneath this little bottom in here that is forever lost to me. She's never coming back out. I hope what doesn't happen is there is a kind of lift in the bottom. So I hope that the back of the earring never spikes through the bottom of the bag. But I had been out one night, I get migraines. I had taken my earrings out, put them in this bag. And when I went to get them back, one of the backs is missing and it's down underneath in here. And I know this is not, I, I know we're talking about first world problems here, but it does, things can get stuck in there, so just be careful if you're buying one of these bags, which I adore, and you're putting something in as small as the back of an earring, there, there are things that can disappear under there that can get stuck, or if you have your bag open, there would be small things that could come out this side here, this little tiny space. Now, they would need to be very tiny, but a back of an earring fits it. And just so as you know, and that is as much as I love this bag, if they could have just found a way to make that not be, maybe it's not possible with the construction of a trunk because when you look at it, whenever it's closed, it all lines up and you can't see anything when it's closed. And maybe it's just how they have to make these to put them together. But just something you should know, and it annoys me because I can't get it out and it's not so much about the back of an earring because I have lots of backs of earrings. I just hope that it never comes up through the bottom and that you can never see it or it never marks it or any way. And that's just my little tiny first world frustration with this absolute stunning bag. Next, we're on a roll here working around this room. <laughs> and it's this beauty. And this bag is pretty new to my collection. I bought this bag at the store opening of the new Louis Vuitton in Dublin in Grafton Street. I'd had to pre-order it. These are very, very hard to get in this particular denim. And I really, really like this bag. I really like the denim. I think it's edgy. I think having the silver hardware with it, a lot of my bags are gold, so it adds something else to my collection. But if I'm entirely honest with you, it's this strap. Now, luckily this strap works perfectly for me lengthwise. I did say when I first unboxed this video that I would prop unbox this video, hmm, unbox this bag. I did say that I would wear it, and now it's on the floor. <laughs> I did say that I would wear it on the longest strap because I generally do for crossbody, but I actually prefer it on the middle one. And when I first bought it, I thought the middle one would be never used for me. I didn't think it worked, but I like it sitting that little bit higher crossbody. The shape of it works really well, and I like it on the middle one. So it does, the, the length works perfectly, and you can adjust it by opening up these little hook things, and you just slide it along. So you have it in the longest one, or you can slide it along here to the second one, which is where I've been wearing it, or you can slide it along to the very shortest and make it very short. So what am I complaining about? It just, this strap looks a bit cheap and it just kind of doesn't really look like it should be Louis Vuitton quality. It looks like a thin black leather strap. Well, it doesn't look like that's what it is. It's a thin black Louis Vuitton leather strap. Now it does have Louis Vuitton on the hardware, but the strap itself looks a bit cheap for the price of the bag, in my humble opinion. 
And <laughs> now that we're slating all of my bags in this room, it just, it just looks a little bit cheap. Now, when you're wearing it, and you're wearing it with the bag that I'm gonna pick up off the floor, now that she's back with us unharmed, so when you're wearing it, it's not that it detracts from the bag, because the bag itself, I suppose, is enough of a statement that the bag takes away from the strap. And the strap is generally across you, if you're me. So, and the black works very, very well. So, I'm not saying that it should have had some flamboyant strap with it, but I think even the normal type of strap where it has the different holes in it and it has the belt buckle and you can lengthen it whatever way you want would look a little bit more substantive maybe and would maybe look a little bit more like it met the price of what you've paid. It does have the Louis Vuitton stamp on there if you can see the Louis Vuitton Paris there. So it does have those things on it. I just think this version of their strap is a little bit cheap looking compared to the price of their bags. Next, let's slate the classic flap. So, <laughs> my very expensive Chanel classic flap from the 19S collection in the iridescent pink. I think this bag's stunning. I think it's beautiful. The length really annoys me. And I've said this in videos before, I just think it's an awkward length. Now, I have my black one here and I did get my black one extended. I will try both of these on together to let you see the difference. I'll put them both cross body and you can see the strap length on this. And this works a lot better for me now this has been extended. This sits far better under my arm. It's a far better length. I'm not skinny. Maybe if you're skinny, you don't need to worry about this. For me as a normal person, under my arm, this set away way up here whenever it's not extended. And I'll show you with this one. And whenever it was cross body, it was up about here. And that's just not flattering for me. And I like to be able to wear it cross body. I know some people would say these bags aren't for cross body, but I like to be able to do it. So I got the strap of this one extended by Leather Surgeons and made it much longer so as I can wear this now comfortably under my arm or comfortably across me. I haven't done that with this one. I want to see how I get on with this one and see if I use it on my shoulder or if I use it handheld even like this. And one of the reasons I want to see how I get on with this first is I this is black caviar. So it's not the most unusual of leathers in the world. This is the 19S iridescent pink, which you can see shining there. It's really, really stunning, but I, I don't know if that would be easily replicated. So I don't know if leather surgeons would be able to insert a piece of leather into the strap of this one that you didn't notice the way they come with this one. I couldn't even tell you where they've inserted the leather onto that. You can't see the break, you can't see it. Whereas on this one, I just worry that with the type of leather this is, it might be a little bit more noticeable and I'm a bit more reluctant to do it with this one. But the length annoys me, <laughs> does. And I know that some people will say then don't buy a classic flap because that's the length of the classic flap. But if you're looking at any of these bags, I'm gonna be honest with you and give you what annoys me and what I hate about them that if I could change, I would to make them a bit easier to use. A lot of people will also say they don't like this double flap because it makes the bag heavier and it does make the bag heavy. It's a full leather bag with this double flap and it can be quite heavy and it does not hold very much. And the flap I think does hinder that a little bit, doesn't hold very much. That so much doesn't bother me. The flap doesn't really bother me, to be honest. It is a bit more awkward when you're getting in and out of it. You have to lift them both up. So if you're buying one of these, let's show you on this one, which I have used an awful lot more. If you're buying one of these, you have to lift this up as well to get in and out of your stuff, which can annoy some people. This little pocket up here is pretty pointless and it doesn't hold a huge amount, but I don't carry a huge amount. So that's not too bad for me. It is heavy, I will give you that. It's definitely heavy, but the length is probably the thing about these that annoys me the most. Mini Capucines, and I've talked about these before. I love these, I think they're the cutest little thing. I love these for a night out when you're carrying it handheld. You're not trying to get in and out of it very quickly and you're not trying to carry a lot of stuff in it. But if you're interested in one of these, these are very expensive now. I think they're stunning, I think they're beautiful. I do think they're a moment, I absolutely love them. But you should know that they're quite annoying. They're quite annoying to use. <laughs> they're quite annoying to use because they have this flap down the middle of them. And I've spoke about this before. See how that separates the space into two? This doesn't move. And it's not just because this one's plexiglass. It's the same on the one that's behind us here. This is held in place with these. It's part of the design. So it's not like you can push the strap out of the way. So you're trying to get, and that's not an overly big space. 
you're trying to get in underneath the handle to get your things in and out and this is in the way separating the space and I do find I have to Tetris this a bit to fit everything in because this just separates it and if they had just taken that out now I appreciate this is a mini version of the actual capucine which you can see one over here this is in because that's part of the design but in the mini version they don't really need it there's not that much space in there and if that had been out of the way this would be easier to use you would still be using this small space to get everything in and out of but you wouldn't be trying to work between two small compartments if you'd one bigger compartment it would have been a bit easier these do come with the crossbody strap it's a very slightly short it probably um for me in a perfect world could have been a little bit longer it doesn't really bother me that much to be honest with you it is a but just bear in mind it is slightly short. What I would say more about the crossbody strap with these is using these crossbody, if you're using them shopping or something and you're trying to get in and out of them quickly and you're standing at the queue and everybody's queuing behind you and waiting for you to hurry up and you're trying to get your things in and out, it can be a bit laboursome because this is a bit awkward. So using it as a crossbody everyday type bag, although it looks Fabulous, it's not the easiest to use. Now the Gabrielle, going right to around this room. The thing about the Gabrielle is with these chains, you can wear this bag so many ways. If you want to maneuver this onto your back as a backpack, you can. If you just want to double it up and wear it on your shoulder, you can. That's probably the easiest way to work the chains. You can loop them over a number of times to make it work for your crossbody and that's obviously the way I was using it the last time I had it on because that's the way it's sitting. What annoys me about this bag is you can fiddle and maneuver and get these chains sitting perfectly. You put it on, looks good, it's exactly how you want to wear it and then they move. They, they move by their own accord and annoys me. So you have it worked out. I generally loop it twice if I'm wearing this crossbody. When I loop it once, it's still a little bit long on me. If you wear this as a crossbody bag, just as it is, it's very, very long. So if I loop it twice and I get it to sit as I want, one, because chains move, two times never sits the same way. So I can think I have this mastered and think I have it exactly the way I want it and I'll put it on and it just doesn't look the way it did and I can't get it right and I can't get it to sit the way I want it to sit or I play with it, I get it to the way I want it to sit and then it moves and I check the mirror and it's annoying me because it's not how I wanted it to sit. Now, is it enough to make me not use this bag? No, it's not. Is it enough to make me not love this bag? No, it's not. I do really, really like this bag. I think it's a little bit edgy for Chanel and I think it gives a little bit of a different look whenever I'm using it. If I'm using burgundy, I normally use this if I want it to be crossbody. If I'm using one that I want to be handheld, I generally use the saddlebag, which is over there. This, I just, it, it's annoying with the straps, trying to get them to sit perfectly well. I know it's one of the design features of this bag that it looks cool with all the different straps and you can move it into all these different ways and that's great but just when you do move them into all the different ways sometimes it moves itself out of the different ways and it's not how you wanted it to sit. I feel like when I finish this video and leave this room all these bags are going to gang up and revolt against me with everything I've just said. Next is this. This bag's cool. I love this bag. I especially love it with these brooches added on to it I think it gives it something really quite special it's so easy to wear you just fling it on you in fact I think I'm going to take this bag with me today it'll go well with what I'm wearing so anyway enough about that what is annoying about this bag so this is a denim decompressed large Chanel bag that, that is a bit like the size of the jumbo but it's much much lighter it's very very long the length of it and if you can see how the chains are now, I have ordered from Amazon the straps to put here so as I can wear it easier crossbody. I'm going to put it the long way, gather the straps in here like this, and I'm going to make it crossbody. What I don't know yet, you can see when I pull that in that it pulls the denim in. So I don't know if it's still going to sit the same when I do that, or I don't know if it's going to pull the bag in because the denim fabric is so soft. But at the minute to wear this crossbody, it's far too long on me. It looks a bit ridiculous. I'll try it on for you. To show you, it's very, very long. Now, like this, it's a great length and I can use it very casually. Don't need to worry about it. It's not stuck up here or anything, but crossbody, it's just very, very long. And yes, by the way, I do hear myself 
There's no pleasing me with strap lengths. I'm either complaining that they're too short or they're too long. And I think we're onto the last bag if I just check around this room. Nope, we've two more to have a go at. <laughs> First is the Louis Vuitton twist bag. Now I'm gonna say from the outset, I'm a fan of the twist bag. I really do like it. I like the lock on it. I like that it's LV that spins around like this. I really like this version that has the limited edition black and white monogram. And it has an insert up here so as the chain is not sitting on your strap. The only thing about this bag, because it's mostly chain, is it gets quite heavy. And I know that sounds ridiculous because the Chanel Minis are chain bags and so many of the Chanel bags are chain bags. For some reason, when I wear this one crossbody, I just find perhaps it's the leather, the structure of the bag, it's heavier than wearing, say, like a Chanel Mini all day. And this is the small size, the PM. I think there's a tinier one now, but this was the smallest one I bought this. And it just, I don't know if it's all the hardware. I still wear it. It's not that it stops me wanting to use this bag, but I would be conscious if I was going to use this bag for a very long period of time because it does get quite heavy. I actually used to have the MM in the twist, which is the bigger one in the Epi leather. Epi leather is so durable. It is the leather that's on this fuchsia pink Petite Mal, you can see here, it's very, very durable, but it is a heavy leather. And the MM size in that twist in the Epi leather was very heavy if you wore it for a length of time. Next is the saddlebag. <laughs> so many people don't like this and so many people are gonna say the shape of it. I love the shape of it. I appreciate it looks like a kidney bean, but I don't care. I think it's a bit different. It's something I really, really like. The thing about this that I find annoying whenever we're being honest here, is if you put a strap on this to wear it crossbody. Now the strap's another thing. The strap that you buy separately, the thick one on me is too short to wear it crossbody. Dior have released a new Dior saddlebag that now comes with a crossbody strap. But if we get around the strap issue and we have a strap on it to wear it crossbody that we're happy with, what do we do with that? So if you're wearing it, it kind of pokes up and into you. Now, if you could train it to kind of sit down a bit and kind of sit flat across the top of the bag, it probably will get there eventually. But the few times I've went to wear this crossbody, and I generally don't, I generally wear this handheld, I've been stuck with this and not really known what to do with it. And it's kind of stuck up a little bit. And it hasn't maybe been worn enough to train it to sit down and it kind of sits up into your chest and it's a little bit annoying. Now, I appreciate that the strap is attached to the CD. So how do you make that detachable? Well, maybe you put a wee thing in the back. Maybe there's a way to do that, but it would, it would completely change the look of the saddlebag. I appreciate that. And I can understand why that's not on it. But just when you wear it cross body, this does stick up and kind of stick into you. So for the saddlebag for me in the normal size, which is this one, I have tried on the mini, which sits I think better crossbody, and I really, really like. If they just made a very bright color, really, really like it. This I think just, I think it's for me anyway, it's better handheld because this annoys me when I'm wearing it crossbody. And finally, I'm going to mention this one, but if you want more information on this, go to Dale's channel because mine so far, there is nothing wrong with the sequence in mine. Mine are all, I think, still intact. Dale ordered this in the fabulous, fabulous fuchsia pink color. Mine is obviously the purple rain. The fuchsia pink is fabulous, but when Dale's arrived, there was a row of sequins had to come off her Fendi baguette, her brand new magenta sequenced Fendi baguette. There were sequenced off it already and she's had to send it back. So far for me, so far so good. They all seem to be intact, but it annoys me that that's an issue. It annoys me that that's something that you need to worry about and you now are conscious that you need to be checking your baguette. Will it make me send this back? Absolutely not. Obviously if sequins come off it, I'll send it back to try and get it repaired, but it wouldn't make me sell this bag. I love this bag, this bag not going anywhere and I will just check it and I will live with the fact that sequins may come off it because I think this is stunning. I think it's stunningly beautiful. But it's just annoying that at this price that happens and they can't come up with a way to sell a sequins bag for thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars where the sequins stay on it especially when it's just arrived. So that is a whistle stop tour around this room. I don't think we left too many out, but <laughs> it is a look at what I hear about my luxury bags, the things that really annoy me and frustrate me and get under my skin. 
doesn't put me off them. I'm not selling any of them. I still love them all. I still love having them and wearing them. But when I'm wearing them, these are the things that I just find annoying and would do differently if I could. I hope if you're looking at any of these bags or they've been on your mind that this is interesting for you and it's giving you a little bit more insight into what it's like to actually have and use these bags. I find these videos very, very helpful. Thank you so much for watching me. If you have enjoyed this or it has been useful, please do consider giving me a thumbs up. Please do consider subscribing. Thank you so much for being here. Please take care and I will see you again in the next one.